Good morning, everyone. Welcome to this presentation of the master program in uh, environmental and land engineering. Uh, I am Valentina Socco, uh, the chair of the education board in environmental engineering programs, and uh, I teach geophysics. And with me, there are uh, four professors which are very active in our master degree program. Professor Daniele Peila, uh, who is uh, our reference for geoengineering, uh, great expertise in tunneling and uh, excavation works and underground works. Um, uh, professor uh, Jos van der Berger, uh, who is uh, our uh, professor of uh, uh, climate system in the climate change track of our program, and uh, Professor Pierluigi Klaps, uh, who is our reference for uh, natural hazard and civil protection. And uh, I see uh, also Professoressa Maria Chiara Zanetti, but she's having some trouble in connection, so hopefully she will be able to reach us. And she is a, a great expert in uh, environmental pollution and, um, and sanitary engineering. Uh, I will give you a presentation about the program and then uh, we will open the floor for your question uh, and we will answer um, uh, together according to the, to the topic you are interested in. Uh, so what is, uh, what is an environmental? And I, I kindly ask my colleagues to to, to mute their microphone, thank you. Um, uh, so, uh, what is a master? Uh, what is a master engineering in in, in environmental and, and, and land engineering? Is a, is an engineer that is able to to approach at high level um, all the complex problems which are related to the different elements on the environment: uh, water, soil, atmosphere, biosphere, and human activities. Uh, an environmental and land engineer is able to plan, design, implement, manage, and monitor processes, solutions, plans, and works in a safe and sustainable way. And uh, environmental engineers work in public and private institutions uh, to guarantee safety and sustainability of human activities. Let's start from, from job opportunities, which are a very important aspect. If we look at this, uh, at this slide, we see on the right side the comparison between uh, the number of uh, graduates um, who have found a job during the first year after the graduation. The first uh, circle provides uh, the percentage in all Italian universities, the second circle in all Italian engineering universities, the third circle is uh, Politecnico di Torino Environmental and Land Engineering. It's about 85% of the students. Um, if we look at the post job, a post, um, job post in a very famous uh, recruitment uh, website like LinkedIn, uh, very recently these numbers have been taken in May, so we were in the, in, in the middle of, of, the, of the sanitary emergency, uh, and we see the numbers at global world scale European scale and Italian scale, we see that uh, the number of uh, opportunities for environmental engineering are extremely interesting, but they increase enormously because we, we have to add additional large numbers if we include in our search some keywords like safety and sustainability, which are the pillars of the culture of environmental engineers. That's to say that the competencies of environmental engineers are useful independently from being an environmental engineer. Where do you have opportunities for your work? Certainly, uh, a, a wide opportunity is in industry. Industry uh, now requires uh, knowledge, skills, and competences in sustainability, safety, quality, which are the, the, the core of, of, of your preparation. Um, in this master program, and uh, not only those industries which are directly related to um, environments, such as those who are those those uh, companies who who, who manage uh, waste or uh, wastewater or pollution or or uh, remediation of sites, but also industry at the, in a in a broadband sense. Whatever is the field of application, um, compliance with uh, uh, sustainability is, has become a major uh, important uh, aspect. 
So uh, it is important uh, to, to stress that nowadays environmental engineers can find job opportunities in industry uh, not only related to environment directly. Close to industry, there is a lot of opportunities in consultancy and design uh, companies. Um, uh, Almost 35% of our uh, graduated engineer works as consultant in design, uh, in design firms. And another uh, important basing for occupational opportunities is public institutions. In all those public bodies and agencies which have the role of uh, uh, regulating and controlling the application of environmental rules. Uh, since environment is a complex topic that requires continuous invention of new solutions, research and innovation is also a, a, a field where, where an environmental engineer can find many opportunities. And there are uh, graduated students who decide to continue studying. In particular, if you want to, to work in research, uh, a PhD is also uh, an opportunity after your master degree, but there are also several specializing master in continuing learning experience that you can find at Politecnico or outside. Our um, uh, Master of Science program is divided in four different tracks. Uh, two of them are entirely taught in English, climate change and geoengineering. The other two are partly taught in English and partly in Italian. Climate change is a uh, um, relatively new um, track we started last year is the first uh, um, engineering uh, program that uh, deals with climate change in Europe. Uh, we are starting the second year this year. Professor um, Van der Berger is, is, uh, is one of the teacher of the first year, so he can, he can give you some hint about it if you have specific questions about the content of the program. Um, and then we have um, environmental protection, which is uh, in Italian tutela ambientale, uh, which is uh, the track which is more directly oriented toward industry. Uh, it deals with uh, pollutions, uh, waste management, and also um, uh, company management in an environmental way. We have then uh, natural hazard and civil protection, which is more directed to um, to the management of land and regulation and, and natural hazard and also civil protection plans. And last but not least, we have geoengineering, which is the more, let's say, hard engineering track in our, in our choices. Uh, and um, you see that Professor Daniele Peila has put an helmet on his head. So just to give you an idea, uh, here you, you have to be one of those kids who like to, to make hole in the sand uh, when you were at the sea. And, and that is, that is uh, at, the, at the beach, that, that is uh, this kind, it's, it's the closer to, to civil engineering in a way, but it's more related to underground works, tunneling and uh, strategic infrastructure. Let's go a little bit more in detail about uh, the, the, the programs. Uh, so uh, here we have the different tracks, uh, um, uh, study, study plan. So here you have all the exam, first year, second year, and elective courses. And the colors are related to the category of topics. The blue ones are those more related to fluids. Uh, the brown ones are more related to earth. Uh, the green ones are more specifically environmental topic, and the gray ones are the really engineering topics. Um, so we have uh, the climate change track as four keywords, knowledge, uh, mitigation, adaptation, and innovation. These are the pillars of this track. There are some courses which are in common with the other tracks, but uh, most of them are specifically designed for uh, this program. Then we have environmental protection. Environmental protection has uh, um, uh, a lot of uh, courses related to um, modeling of pollution phenomena in, in water, uh, atmosphere, and uh, underground, and soil, and remediation. So you learn how to handle pollution, to mitigate it, to prevent it, to handle waste, and all these um, important environmental problems. 
um, natural hazard and civil protection uh, uh, consider uh, both the, the fluid and, and solid earth and their interaction in the framework of natural hazard. Uh, and it uh, provides you uh, a knowledge and understanding on how to predict and mitigate this, uh, this hazard, how to plan the proper use of land in order to reduce the risk. And finally, geoengineering is a, a, a very, let's say, engineering track in which you learn how to uh, design and, 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 uh, and direct the work for tunneling, underground excavation, but also um, uh, remediation of problem of instabilities and, and uh, landslides and, and, and this kind of issues. So um, we have a quite broad offer of uh, international mobilities for our students. We have a very lively a set of, uh, of um, learning agreement with uh, excellent university in Europe, but not only. And it is possible to use Erasmus program uh, to, to spend one year or one semester abroad, but also um, to, to have a specific uh, a grant to, to do your only your thesis abroad in a university of your choice, also outside uh, the, the program that we have. In this picture, you see that uh, um, only those uh, where you see also a little face are those where we actually have people. Most of our students in mobility have come back during the em emergency. Few of them have, have remained uh, in, in their new university and are still there and, and they are uh, studying online, remaining in the, in the new city where they have spent their year abroad. Uh, our um, our uh, program is, uh, is has a very wide offer of courses. You have seen we have also many elective courses, and uh, you can have up to three elective courses in the program. So you can personalize, you can shape your track as you want. But also, uh, we have uh, another peculiarity that we do a lot of our teaching activity outside uh, the Polytechnico building. We, we work a lot in lab, also at the computer lab, but in real labs, but also a lot in the field. There is a, a very important uh, program of uh, technical visits and, um, and uh, field work that we always carried out in almost all our, our courses. Another aspect that we, um, that we um, are also um, supporting a lot is activity of student teams. Student teams are a group of students who present a project at Politecnico. Uh, the project is uh, evaluated, funded, and, uh, and then they have different scopes and they produce their project with the tutoring of, of, a, of a professor. Uh, there are many teams at Politecnico. In particular, uh, we have three of them which are uh, specifically related to environmental uh, engineering, but uh, uh, they are full of students coming also from other, uh, from other um, uh, tracks. Uh, we have three. The first one is uh, Milego al Territorio. I link myself to Lens, but Le Lego is in fact the construction toy because it's a group of students who have as a task to explain and to and to create awareness about hydrogeological risk in primary school kids. So they create enormous analog models in, in, in Lego and they uh, travel around Italy to explain to primary school kids uh, what, uh, what is hydrogeological risk. Then we have direct, and you see in the picture a drone, uh, and, um, and the drone uh, is, uh, is used. Uh, here we are in the red zone of the Italian earthquake, of Central Italy earthquake. The, the drones are used by this team to make a, a survey uh, in, um, in um, post-emergency situations. And the last team that has cre been created last year is um, Akanoa. Akanoa is a team that is building a high technology boat that is going to, um, to uh, go on the Po River uh, to, 
um, to survey the, the river and to collect uh, garb garbage and to understand what is the uh, health condition of the river. Another thing that we, that we uh, strongly encourage our students to do is to uh, have uh, uh, professional training uh, with an internship in, um, in, uh, in a company. You can use your free credit, your, uh, your elective, uh, your, your free credit slots to, to make a professional training period. And we facilitate this professional training period by creating events like the one you see in these slides in which we, we organize a full day of meeting with students and companies who come to Politecnico to offer opportunities for professional training and jobs. Uh, our uh, program is 120 credits, uh, organizing two semesters, uh, fall semester, 14 weeks from September to January, and then uh, a, a spring semester from, from March to June, uh, 10 hours of um, uh, class activities for each credit, plus 15 hours of independent work of the students. Uh, the enrollment uh, uh, for, uh, we are uh, open to students with different backgrounds than environmental engineering. We accept students almost without debt from most of engineering tracks, um, but there are some requirements of your CV and of your level during the, the, um, your bachelor program that you have to check and also the uh, Eng English certification is required. For uh, foreigner students, um, there are usually two calls per year, one, in, one starts in December, one in March but, or February, but this year, exceptionally due to the emergency, we have opened um, a, a third call, which is open now, and it will close the 19th of June, in which uh, a foreigner student can apply. Uh, also here, the English certification is required. It is, uh, of course, clear that this year is not possible to have uh, English certification. So uh, we accept also students who have not have your certificate, the certification yet, but uh, they are going to, 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 to gain it during uh, the first, uh, the first uh, academic year. Uh, you will have time up to June 21 to get your English certificate. For those of you who are not students of Politecnico and you are interested in seeing how is our online teaching environment, because you of course know that at, at the moment we cannot teach in class, so we, we need to be online and the same will happen for uh, the great part of our teaching activity in the next semester, for the next academic year. Uh, but if you are interested to see what is, a, what is a, a virtual classroom of Politecnico, you can apply to these question and, and answer sessions that we have opened. It will be open every Wednesday afternoon. Um, so you have to fill a form and, uh, and uh, decide the date you prefer. And uh, you will be allowed to enter in a class and meet students and professor. Um, so check this, uh, check, check this, um, uh, this uh, link on our department and, uh, and program website. Uh, I would like to conclude uh, with, uh, with uh, moving from the more technical and, and uh, let's say, uh, paperwork uh, stories, but uh, going back to what does it mean to be an environmental engineer? What does it mean to work uh, uh, in, in for environment. Here I have listed uh, what have been called the uh, five grand challenges. Uh, these five grand challenges have been defined by a very important panel of the US National Academy of, uh, Academy of Science that in 2019 have, um, have um, prepared a document about the, the environmental engineering for the 21st century, uh, addressing grand challenges. Challenges. Let's read them together. Carb climate change and adapt to its impact. Sustainably supply food, water, and energy. Design a future without pollution. Create efficient, healthy, resilient cities. Foster informed decision and actions. Well, I think that these challenges are the challenges, independently by being or not being an environmental engineer. And we are completely embedded into them. So in order to discuss these very 
important topics with you, we have launched uh, in these days a series of webinars. Please check for the program on our website. The first five webinars are exactly addressing uh, these, uh, these challenges. The first two have already occurred uh, this week and next week the, on, on Wednesday we will have uh, the next one. And, and then we have added another two challenges which are very close to our, our area of, of interest, which are um, the raw material for a greener future and the decarbonization. So please, if you are interested in deepening uh, the challenges for, for environmental engineering, have a look at this webinar series. Uh, also, please be curious about our website, dig our website of the department and of the program where you can find a lot of information. And um, I leave you with a, with a hope, which is that we all contribute to build a sustainable future. And I hope you will do it also by enrolling in the environmental and land engineering master program. So now I, I, this presentation is finished and uh, we are glad to um, answer your questions. So let me check if we have questions. Uh, in the chat you also see some links. Uh, so you have uh, uh, the links to our uh, uh, chat uh, and question and answer service, which is uh, all, which is open all day today, and also about uh, the website and uh, the webinar and the questions and answer that I have uh, provided to you. Which undergraduate discipline? Awesome. Which undergraduate disciplines uh, do your students usually come from? Most of our students. Let's say that at least half of our students are environmental engineering, not necessarily from Politecnico di Torino. Uh, we have 60% uh, of our students come from other universities than Politecnico uh, and, and then our Bachelor in Environmental Engineering. Um, we have students uh, from civil engineering, from energy engineering, from mechanical engineering, from management engineering. Um, we have also few students from earth science usually uh, to enter with a, with an earth science degree uh, it is necessary to to uh, let's say to recover some some uh, teaching depth uh, in 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 uh, fundamental uh, fundamental subjects but we have also few uh, geoscientists uh, who have decided to continue their their track uh, as engineers and uh, from from abroad, we we also we also accept um, uh, students with degrees in math or physics, so they can apply. The selection of students from abroad is done on the basis of their CV and, in particular, of their university transcript. So we require a very good fundamental uh, knowledge background in math and physics, and a little bit of chemistry, and then all fundamental courses for us are in, are important, such as fluid dynamics. Uh, thermodynamics, um, uh, continuous mechanics, these are all uh, subjects which are in our bachelor program. So basically that is the background we rely on in our courses. Are there any other questions? In the meantime, uh, if my colleagues want to add something. Uh, I believe it, it is interesting interesting for us has reached this uh, webinar because um, we don't have the clear notion of uh, whether you have uh, addressed uh, our website or uh, you reached this seminar through the Polytechnico page. In, in this direction we have a, um, uh, a, a small survey that we will be glad if you uh, follow. I'm also uh, pleased to welcome Professoressa Maria Chiara Zanetti, who had many troubles in connecting. I'm very happy that she made it for, for the question time. <laughs> Thank you, Maria Chiara, for being here. Uh, <laughs> so yes, please, if you, if you don't mind, uh, fill the poll that is uh, provided in the chat. I have been accepted 
by the climate change department for next semester but i want to work in the field of sustainability in the future is it possible i mean are there enough lessons on this subject to be specialty well uh, i can i can leave a little bit uh, maybe yours to say something about the track in climate change uh, and then maybe uh, maria chiara may add something about sustainability she's a great expert on that so maybe she can she can also comment on in general how sustainability fill our program uh, yes so i can say something about the basics uh, and then uh, indeed on sustainability i would leave to maria chiara um i can tell what i can say what what is happening in my course which is actually one of the first courses it's at the beginning of the first semester and uh, what we are going what we are doing is um to give a general introduction to, to the climate system. So before talking about climate change, of course, we need to know something about the climate system. Um, the, uh, and immediately, of course, we are going to talk about the processes and the feedbacks, which are at the basic, at the base of, of also of, of the function of the climate system and of course of climate change. Um, we discuss the possible drivers of climate change and actually the course is organized i would say almost in two parts in the sense that but, well we transition sort of softly from one to the other so there's the first part where we talk mainly about this about the main processes and the big cycles the carbon cycle the water cycle etc in the climate system which uh, and how they work so that's a little bit more sort of to give a theoretical basis of how how so that you can understand what is going on and then we move to talk actually also about models so how nowadays we 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 understand the climate system also through this important tool which is, is numerical modeling and uh, and, to, and at that point we can also talk about how the mod these models sort of work and how we, they applied to actually develop at this point projections also for the future of the of climate change and of the evolution of of the climate system uh, in doing so, we also discuss uh, the main problem, that, which is also that these models obviously work at different scales. I mean, when I talk about global climate models, I obviously uh, I think mainly, or you will think mainly of the big global climate models. But of course, we also have regional climate models. And we have the big problem that we need to move somehow from these large scales to something which is much more relevant when we think about uh, impacts on our territory at a more local scale. So in the final part of the course, we actually then start to move down this sort of chain from the big scales and discuss also how we uh, can transfer this information which we get from the big models to, <clears throat> to, the lo to, lo to local scales so that then they can be used uh, also for impact studies or uh, uh, Im impacts on the hydrological cycle, um, uh, in looking at extremes, etc. And so with this problem of so-called downscaling will be sort of the, what we address in the final part of the course. And also <clears throat> I can mention the fact that uh, in this course and, and actually also in the other courses which are uh, which I know of, of in, in, in our study plan, uh, there's a lot of <clears throat> also uh, lab activities, in, particularly in this course we have something like 20, I mean the total length of the course is about 80 80 hours, but of these 24 hours are dedicated also to a numerical lab. Uh, what we do is actually we learn how to deal with uh, data from uh, climate models. Uh, and we actually use a programming language to uh, analyze them and do some basic things, obviously, to, to start. But so you can get the feeling how to manipulate this data and do some analysis, so some statistical analysis, and particularly analysis of change and of climate change. And we actually use the outputs directly of uh, one big cl global climate model and also some um, uh, data sets from observations. Uh, uh, so actually we have three parts. We do an analysis of global models, uh, analysis of uh, uh, precipitation observations from a regional basis, and we also develop a little tiny, in this case, quite theoretical, but uh, basic um, uh, climate model actually ourselves. Um, and so that, that's part of that. And uh, and yeah, and then actually the question was more about uh, sustainability. Well, so yes, 